<laughs> so many questions, so many things to go through. That's right, Tablet MGPT. Let's get started. Okay, so to get to this point has taken me around about a week. And throughout that journey, I've gone through peaks and troughs. And I'm here to essentially cut out all of those and give you the shortcut to how this is working and where Tableau Team GPT will actually go in the future, okay? So the first step is, what am I looking at? Well, I'm looking at a GPT, which is what OpenAI are calling them, that is uh, deployed on the chat GPT store. This is something that OpenAI announced last week. And as part of that announcement, they actually announced a whole slew of changes. One of them was an enhancement to ChatGPT itself, giving it the ability to search the internet. The other was uh, an increase in the number of tokens. So you can essentially feed it more text or feed it more information per query, which is a pretty big change. And then on top of that, they've also opened up this possibility for an app store like ecosystem. And they've allowed uh, people to create their own model. And this is only available through ChatGPT Plus, essentially. And I actually had to uh, shut down subscriptions and signups because it just got out of hand. And basically, they didn't have enough servers to meet demand. So they've shut it down for a while. So if you're not already in this, you just have to wait a while. But I'm going to show you through what it takes to kind of make a GPT. And I have to be upfront and tell you that. I don't think this was as amazing as it initially sounded, and I'll get into that in a second. Now, how do you do this? Well, it's quite simple. If I open up my side pane here, you can see that I have some GPTs, but if I go to the Explore tab and push this back so we can get the full screen, you can see that I have some recently used GPTs. A friend of mine who runs a podcast called Damn Kind uh, has a knowledge graph, which is essentially a GPT that allows you to ask questions about the topics he's covered in his podcast, which is sensational. Um, the other ones that you can see here are ones that are untitled, the one that I'm playing around with at the moment, and of course, Tableau Tim GPT. Let me just show you what it's like to create one. Let's go ahead and hit Create GPT. And when we do this, we essentially get a prompting interface on the left, and on the right, we get a preview of our GPT. So what this essentially is, is that if you don't do anything, on the right, you basically have Chat GPT. Uh, the version for the most recent up-to-date one as of last week. As you enhance the prompt, what it's essentially doing is configuring the way ChatGPT behaves to be specifically good at answering specific types of questions. So if I come out of this new one and I go back to mine and I click edit, you'll see that the prompt is still blank because we haven't done anything today. But if I go to the configure tab, it's got the configuration for my GPT. So it starts off with a name, pretty easy, a description, and then you've got the instructions. And the way the instruction is built is essentially by taking your prompts as you walk and talk through that chat interface. And it summarizes it down into a paragraph based on things you've said. And you can also change this yourself. So you can see that I've pointed it to specific things. I've told it to go and look at certain things. I've given it certain pages. And then as you go down, you have things which are conversation starters, things that people can ask to give them hints about what your GPT can do. And then came the bit that I think excited me massively, which was the knowledge section. What you can do with the knowledge section is essentially feed it information. And what it does, what I thought it initially did is it was gonna train itself on that knowledge, but it doesn't actually do that. What it does is it searches the knowledge during the query. So it's a bit like you've gone out and got a certain piece of information and you've put it as the context of your GPT. And you're gonna get it to search that information whilst using ChatGPT's own capabilities. On top of that, it's going to go out and search things on the internet. And it's also been updated to April 2023, so it's going to be up to date. And then on the bottom, you have the capabilities. One of the changes they made was they made the GPT context understand image queries and code interpreter in one context, which means you can be having a conversation with GPT, uh, get into, let's say, a mathematical pro problem, use code interpreter to solve it, go back into the conversation, and having had that conversation, use the information you've garnered and ask it to create a graphic from that. So it can kind of do all of that work in one context. No need to kind of switch between tabs and move the information around. So that sets the context. The final thing that's super important here is this small bit at the bottom, which is actions. And this is really where the power is because what you can do, you can go and get uh, uh, essentially API systems that have been set up to work with the OpenAI schema. So an example they showed off was uh, getting Zapier or Todoist or a, a tool called Retool to essentially integrate with ChatGPT so you could perform actions whilst in your GPT. So you can kind of make very specific things. A good example is, for example, uh, sending information to a Google Doc, 
that isn't a good example of an action. And it's got all the things you'd expect, including authentication as well. So you can actually get this to authenticate with systems that you're familiar with, or you can build your own um, open AI schema set up an API and get it to work. You of course need a privacy policy and everything for that to kind of play ball, because of course you're gonna put this in the marketplace. So you will need a privacy policy that people adhere to. But that is the configuration. Now, in the context of Tableau Tim GPT, what I was gonna do, and what I thought this system was doing was essentially uh, taking what I was putting in here and uh, using it to retrain the model. The reason that's probably not <laughs> possible because if you imagine how many people are doing this, they're all going to be putting their data in. It just costs too much to retrain the model and everything we're throwing at it. So they might use it for contextual information, but what does make sense is searching and sort of refining and honing down the GPT so it knows where the context should be. And that's kind of handy. So what I initially did was I took the top 50 videos on my channel. Uh, between them, they've got about two and a half million views. And I took the transcript from those and um, 10 transcripts at a time, I merged them into one file. And so I've uploaded these files here, but you can see that it's it's not, it's you're gonna see the results. It's not actually that helpful because it's actually quite a lot of information to search. Bearing in mind some of these transcripts, one of them is like four hours long, another one is like two hours long. They're not easy to search. And so I kind of missed the trick here. And where I think this tool is really good is actually building smaller, more precise GPTs. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take Tableau GPT, Tableau Tim GPT, down a separate path. And there is one, there's one huge detail here, which is to do with copyright and content ownership, which I'll come to in a second. Um, I'm 100% convinced that, you know, if I don't do this to my own content, someone else will. So I'm researching and figuring out how, how to do this the best possible way so that I come out with the best version of something that represents my work. <clears throat> but there is a ton of information out there that, you know, I don't own that I think would be absolutely fantastic, maybe owned by other content creators, maybe owned by Tableau. And I hope they're thinking of capabilities like this as well, because what I could see this being really good for is uh, smaller, more capable capabilities. A good example is, let's say I want to learn LODs, and there could be something in the GPT store called um, Tableau LOD GPT. And if you're stuck, you can go to it and ask, hey, what can I do with uh, level of detail calculations. Where this gets powerful is if you can take that and embed it inside of a dashboard and embed it in the sort of creator experience, you can actually have that GPT live alongside the data and the context and help the user work through these problems. Another example, a Tableau conference has finished. Um, you've gone to a few of the sessions, you've taken notes, you've gone to the keynote and you wanna create a GPT that helps people understand what happened at conference. You could do a Tableau conference 2024 GPT, and you could essentially have a conversation with it. You could talk to it and say, hey, what happened in the conference? What were the headline things? What are those features? Tell me more about them, explain how they work. How could I use it in my context? Really niche, really sort of small defined concepts. And the idea is you'd have an army of these GPTs doing lots of different things. And I think that actually makes a lot of sense, but that's not how I set up this particular system. So I've got a huge problem because <clears throat> With over 450 videos um, already sort of created here on YouTube, um, the transcripts are pretty easy to generate. Um, I have a way of doing that, so I'll get onto that. But actually what's more useful is the summary of those transcripts. So for each transcript, taking the key bullet points out of them, the key instructions, the key how-tos, synthesizing that right down so that the body of what's actually useful in that video is actually what's taken. And then having done that, um, build a sort of library of information based on my content and then have this GPT actually use that. And then further down the road, I anticipate you'll probably be able to train your own model at some point. So we'll be able to enhance that and keep going further and further. And so that's where I'm gonna take this. I'm not gonna launch this. Um, I know people will try and want to do stuff, but this is this was just an experiment. And I think people got very excited by it. I got excited by it. But in all honesty, I don't think it's quite ready. But to show you sort of why I think that, I'm gonna show you sort of what it can do and how it works. And just prove to you that actually most of this capability is just coming from ChatGPT4. And that's what's making it great. What it feels like is they're giving people a way to brand these GPTs as their own, when in reality, it's just another vessel for OpenAI to get more reach and sort of get out to more people. What we're gonna do is I'm just gonna uh, update this and make it only to myself. And what it should do is it 
should just update everything we're seeing and we should get a link and I can go and view the GPT. So there we go. And so we're here in Tableau Tim GPT. Let's go ahead and say, um, how do I use Tableau's latest feature? The reason I asked this question is because I put some information there about, uh, you know, the features, including Tableau Pulse. And so you can see here, it's not actually that good. So Sysiacli, could you specify which latest feature in Tableau you're referring to? So um, I'll say uh, Tableau Pulse. I have given it lots of transcripts uh, about uh, my uh, um, script. So Tableau Pulse, a recent addition, Tableau suite of tools, uh, offers a new way to interact with data. Getting started with Tableau Pulse. Now I'm fairly confident it didn't search the knowledge that I have on this, um, but this is basically what it's coming up with. So into Tableau Cloud, you won't be able to use this on Tableau Server. I'm pretty certain about that. <clears throat> Working within Slack, utilizing AI for insights, exploring data analytics. I mean, I'd say this is like a seven out of 10 in terms of quality, maybe six out of 10 in terms of detail as well. Um, uh, let's see, it keeps going, it keeps going. <clears throat> and yeah, it's not too bad. Okay, yeah, um, it's fine, it's not perfect. I kind of I kind of see why it's set up the way it is. Okay, I've opened a new chat. Um, how should I prepare for a Tableau interview? I know it will do this very well. I actually did a whole separate video about this, just using GPT-4. Um, what really matters is the prompt, what you ask, and then how you frame the question. But otherwise, it's it's pretty damn good. Um, what are some best practices for data visualization in Tableau? So let's have a go at this. So understand your audience, yeah. Chart the right chart type, choose the right chart type, keep it simple, use color. I mean, <clears throat> these are all good. I, 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 I like all these, but the detail in them is what's really, really tough, right? So the interesting thing what I haven't seen today is I haven't seen it search my knowledge. So either it's got that in context already or it's um, it's just feeding off its own knowledge. So that's that's another uh, example I'm done. Can you explain Tableau's data models, um, features versus joins? So this is another example question that I put in. This one's taking a bit longer. It might just be that it's busy. <clears throat> there we go. Um, they might have changed the interface because previously you used to say searching knowledge and now it's just going right into it. So logical layer and physical layer, relationships, logical joins, <laughs> data blending. Yeah. Okay. Joins, physical joins. Okay. It's got the context right. <clears throat> um, because this was updated in 2023, the OpenAI GPT-4 model was updated up until April 2023. I think it's just scraped the Tableau website. This is almost too fast and too good to have been from my transcripts, definitely. Um, yes, especially this sort of paragraph. This is like a telltale sign that's come from the Tableau website because it uses some of this terminology, even this exact framing, like um, the way things are sort of laid out kind of feels a bit like it's been scraped from the Tableau website. So that's super f fascinating. And so there is a, there's like an ethical question here because it says Tableau Tim GPT, but how much of this is actually me and how much of this is just my brand and GPT for kind of leading you to specifically ask questions about Tableau? You might associate its performance with my content, but in actual fact, there's no clear way of knowing how much of this is based on my content and how much of it is just based on chat GPT scraping the entire internet without people's permission for the record and uh, using it to their to their advantage. Um, so yeah, I think the legal, the legal, the legal sphere on this is going to be absolutely wild. But <clears throat> thankfully, um, at least with my own content, this is going to be super easy to do, and I can play around with it. And um, that does bring me to the point about content. I think there are going to be people building GPTs um, just by going off and scraping blogs, scraping uh, websites, and not really asking permission. So um, I think that's just something to be wary of. If you 
if you've if you've been making content about a particular particular thing, just be prepared for people to just wholesale copy it. <coughs> the reason I say that is because this is exactly what TikTok and YouTube Shorts mostly are at the moment. If you go and look at some of the most viral content, it's not actually been created by the people posting the content. They've been clipped from YouTube or they've been clipped from sections of other videos where those creators aren't actually getting the, the relevant recognition. So this is a wild, wild west. And so it's one of the reasons I'm sort of a bit reluctant to just put something out there because in all honesty, this might say Tableau Tim GPT, but I don't know where it's getting the information from. And you might incorrectly associate this content with my content and... Yeah, I'd like to think there's only one place to go <laughs> watch my content. That's YouTube or my website. Um, and so, yeah, for now, I'm going to keep working on this. Maybe we'll make some fun GPTs based on transcripts, based on things like my crash course. Um, maybe we'll do some more specific ones and I'll brand them specifically that way. Um, but I think until I have a way of dialing in how much of my own content goes into this knowledge, I'm probably going to stay off for a while.